I am comparing the M3 MacBook Air with the very expensive maxed out M3 Max MacBook Pro in Logic and Ableton. Let's just say that I am impressed on how the M3 MacBook Air performs in these tests. A lot of you are wondering if you really need one of the more expensive MacBook Pros for music production and perhaps other tasks. And I think it's safe to say that the M3 MacBook Air is a competent laptop for a lot of users out there and perhaps it's the only thing you actually need performance wise. How good a computer is performs or performs in music production depends on how big projects you have. I mean, my projects, they are not usually that heavy in the amount of tracks and plugins, but occasionally it can be. So videos like this, where I show off certain projects is really just for you to kind of make the choice easier for you. You know, I cannot make the choice for you, but I can show what is happening. This is not the first video where I test Max in music production and I have a playlist at the end of this video where you will have all of those videos I have made on my channel showing Max in different music production scenarios. In recent times I have also made a DAW overload project. I, the link is in the description below and in this project I have stacked synthesizers with an aim of seeing how many tracks a certain Mac is able to run before it starts crackling audio or overload loads, you need Serum and Diva to be able to run this project or compare the results. Now these tests, they are just made to make you aware of the differences in a general sense. It's not like I have spent five years at a research station making this absolutely perfect. While I try to be as accurate as possible, I you have to take the results with a small grain of salt because things change with time, synths get updated, they get better and computers get better and software and so on. Let's go to the results and later on we can check out those two projects I showed in my previous test video where I actually said that this was the last video on the M3 uh, Max but I actually was able to get the MacBook Air faster. Anyway, so Ableton Live 512 with buffer size and 48 kilohertz was able to run 46 tracks on the M1 MacBook Air, 54 tracks on the M3 MacBook Air and lastly 143 tracks on the M3 Max MacBook Pro 16 core. 32 buffer size in Ableton Live gave us 25 tracks on the M1 MacBook Air, 41 tracks on the M3 MacBook Air, and lastly 90 tracks on the M3 Max MacBook Pro 16 core. In Logic we get the following results, 512 buffer, process buffer range medium, it gives 54 tracks on the M1 MacBook Pro from 2020, 55 tracks on the M3 MacBook Air, and 145 tracks on the M3 Max MacBook Pro 16 core. But when we turn it to 32 buffer and process buffer range small, the results are a little interesting. We get 26 tracks on the M1 MacBook uh, Pro from 2020, 58 tracks on the M3 MacBook Air and 152 tracks on the M3 Max MacBook Pro 16 core. So what I find interesting here is that it seems like the M3 CPU have some performance improvements if we go down in buffer size in these DOS in both Ableton and Logic. However, if we increase the buffer size, it seems like the difference is not that huge between M1 Air Pro and M3 Air. Now let's take a look at those two real world projects I showed in the previous video side by side so you see what happens with the CPU, power and performance graphs. If you want to see what kind of plugins I use in these two projects, uh, check out the previous video where I go into more detail on what type of VSTs and uh, instruments I use on this particular uh, two tracks. It's uh, basically Diva, Legend and uh, Fab Filter stuff, mostly.
The M3 MacBook Air is a really competent computer if you are into music production. You will be able to run some pretty heavy projects on it and it can perhaps be your main production computer. We even showed that on the M1 MacBook Air in uh, an earlier video on this channel a while ago, so I'm not really that surprised because uh, I kind of expected the M3 to perform uh, good. Now, you're not getting around the fact that the M3 Max MacBook Pro performs much better, but the question here is, if it's, if it, is it really worth the price difference? If you looked at my two projects earlier here in this video, you can see that I still had a good amount of headroom in the performance, I don't know, budget, if you will, on the M3 MacBook Air. So I could probably have uh, more tracks on that on those projects without it uh, having much issues. The MacBook Pro obviously also gives you other features like a better display, bigger displays, a better speakers, built-in speakers, SD card slot, more ports. You have more options of getting more memory and storage and it also have active cooling. So if that's important for you, you might consider going for a MacBook Pro and make sure you just get one with the most amount of performance scores. Perhaps just try to go the reuse route as well. And to make it easier for you, I actually have a uh, spreadsheet in the description below showing what type of uh, M CPUs Apple have released over the time. I will update it when the M4 comes out and uh, yeah, how many performance cores it has. So it's easy for you to select uh, what kind of Mac and CPU you want to uh, get because it's not easy to find the performance cores if you go on the Apple's website. It just says the total amount of cores. So I think this also looks pretty promising for the upcoming M4 MacBook Air. When, I mean, when it's out, I guess we, guess we should try to check it out. But uh, until that happens, I am uh, moving back to my PC for music production. That obviously doesn't mean that I am unhappy with the M3 MacBook Air. It's a really, really nice computer. Just means that your boy needs some money for some new synths and uh, yeah, play the occasional PC game. I'm going to keep the M3 MacBook Air. I like it a lot, actually. It's, it's pretty cool. Anyway, I hope this video made some sense. Take care out there and uh, I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.